Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's doing great. We're going to get Mike on for a, a little live. We're going to chat about copy dentures. A little bit more, I think, let's talk about uh, neutral zone impressions and things like that. Um, so I hope we're all doing good. We can get it going pretty quick. But hey, Mike's about. Chris is here already for the little live. I like it. The German's here for a little live as well. Happy days. How are we doing, everyone? Lots of people signing already. Let's just try and get Mike in. This is the best bit. Yeah, cheers, Fitzy. It's a good one that had to change for today. German, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> nah, it's pink tab. It's definitely pink. Go. Mike is unable to join. Excellent. Bear with me, folks. I got Varon on as well. Hey, buddy. Lots of signing in for you, Mike. Get over here. Hey. Here we are. You had me worried. You had me worried. <laughs> Wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> How are you doing, Obviously. my man? <laughs> <laughs> I think be some, goodness knows why, but there might be some disappointed people if I didn't show up, wouldn't there? I know. There's a lot, lot of people signing in, so, yeah. Um, How are you doing? You doing well? Uh, I'm having a grim afternoon, trying to fit a dishwasher. Hence my... <laughs> uh, sorry, washing machine. Integrated washing machine packed up this week. Oh, Made a hideous no. noise, and, oh, God, trying to plumb the new one in. It's next to a dishwasher and the joins are all behind the dishwasher trying to poke stuff through. And there's spiders under the sink. It's all a bit grim. Um, yeah, it's a bit swear and stuff. No, but I've done it. Um, I haven't connected it up yet because I need a, I've got to go to screw fix it in the morning. Um, Not a clinical fine, day yeah. for you. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Multitasking, so. Uh, we've got some greetings from India, from Dr. Arjun, that's good. And <laughs> Amar's asking after our fantastic course that we were at on the weekend is, can you reinforce dentures with ribbond? Denture repairs. That's what Stuart was saying. Some denture repairs. That's the only reason I went. I went on a composite course, Mike. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Hi, Nicky. Yeah. yeah. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Etch and bond and all sorts. All right. Um, AGP <laughs> stuff. The AGP stuff, though, isn't it? Mm, mm. I know that scares you, the AGP. Stuff. You know why? Well, I doesn't say it. Just oh, I just can't be asked to be honest. It's, it's simple, <laughs> simple as simple as that. I just cannot be bothered. I mean, I'll be quite honest. It's like why worry? Why bother? Yeah, um, it's far far too much that hard work, isn't it? Yeah, I drove past the surgery today. I hadn't been into Bristol for ages, and I went past the surgery. Massive, great big orange hose poking out the window. I'm thinking, I oh, just done dentistry nowadays, isn't it? It's just like, I love the orange hose. It's great fun. Yeah, it's yeah. So. Yeah. Really good for your peace of mind in between patients as that's far enough. Is it? But then you go yeah. deaf with all the racket of all the pumps running and the suction and goodness knows what. It's just like... Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. So we're going to uh, we're gonna talk some copy dentures mainly, but I know we want to talk a little bit about neutral zone stuff. Uh, oh, I know I this I is I your... I bought a prop tonight to talk about neutral zone. <gasps> Look, I, I made something especially, we... for the, especially for this oh, evening. So... You shouldn't have. We'll definitely don't do neutral zone then. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a separate presentation. Um, had I not been plumbing this afternoon, I might have polished this a bit more. So um, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's really good. Bad, it? Now I know it's your second official, third unofficial time on, but for anyone who doesn't know, if you just give yourself a quick little introduction, we've got someone called Denture Nerd who's just joined. So that's fantastic. Oh, but yeah, you give us a yeah. little intro for anyone who doesn't know who you are, and then we can jump straight in. Uh, I'm, I'm a denture geek, I suppose. Um, <laughs> we, we've got uh, we're now into my 40 48th year of, of prosthetics in as much as started in 1973 i was talking to a guy last night um who's, who's just discovered us and he said i told him i'd been doing uh started in 1973 he said he wasn't even born then which i guess is the same for most people isn't it i mean if i keep I going much so. longer I so. <laughs> i'll have people who could be old enough to be my grandchildren there's certainly loads of people who could be my, my children not this <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so I started life as a technician back in 73, spent four years, which was a long time, wasn't it? Think about it. I did five, four years and one term to be a dentist. 
four mm. years to be a technician. Amazing training, amazing training. Um, and then I did, uh, what did I do? Four years in production labs in the hospital. Did, some, did one in a prosthetics lab at University College, then a Crown and Bridge lab. Then students said, become a dentist. So I did my A-levels. Started did studying your AGP AGA. training? Yeah. Um, and now that's why I can't be positive anymore. So I, I just now take over and train. So I've been teaching since 1980, and I just still like prosthetics because it's low stress dentistry, isn't it? Yeah. And I don't uh... need to, and I don't need to find a lab. Most people say, oh, "Can you show me a lab?" I say, "Well, most of it I do myself." So, you know, in that respect, and yeah, and the, the lab I use, Dominica's amazing, as you guys know, and she's 15 minutes from me, and she's always got time to talk. So magic so yeah that's always me always helps Do always I cover everything helps. then i think i covered Perfect. a lot then didn't i yeah absolutely spot it. on so you want to jump into copies first of all i think like it's not something i do that often as a, a full process yeah. i do it i do it fairly reason like re, like regularly for sort of um just like an idea height of rims that kind of thing but yeah i don't tend to do it so what are your indications for doing it and when not to I was thinking about this this afternoon, day off, so I think I'll, I'll just think dentistry. Um, I've got two main reasons for doing it. One is, and I don't do much of this a bit like you, I, I used to, and I teach it, um, that if you're going to do copy dentures, copy dentures are the most reliable way of making new dentures for a patient who turns up with, and this is the crunch, painless dentures. Mm -hmm. So somebody turns up with dentures that are making their life miserable. They've never been any good. Just for goodness sake, you're the last thing you want to do. So the classic archetypal copy denture patient, which we would use as an example, is somebody who's, I don't know, 60s, 70s, worn dentures for 20, 30 years, longer. And their dentures are probably a decade plus old. Um, do I mean rebasing with dentures? No. Um, so basically, if somebody's had successful dentures and, and what they turn up with is the dentures look worn out. So they've classically got staining. They have bleached the hell out of them sometimes. So they were once the right color. Now they're uniform. The denture base is the same color as the teeth. Um, there is I'm sort of etched away from, from years of steridant or oh, goodness knows what else. So and they're overclosed. So the dentures look worn mm -hmm. out. They're usually a bit overclosed. And the classic thing is they say. You know, kids quite often say grandparents get told by their grandchildren, you know, grandma, why don't you get your teeth in? And they have. So they classically just turn up and they just, they, somebody's been told they need some new dentures and they were happy with them. Mm -hmm. So if they're happy with them, if you copy them and correct the vertical dimension issues and the cosmetic issues, you can't go wrong. Um, so if they turn up and they've got, they got a bag full of dentures and none of them are any good, I'll just say goodbye to the patient, basically. <laughs> that seems a bit harsh but you're not going to win are you copy denture or not just yeah uh, exactly um so that's the classic copy and then the other copy i do um is when i've done an immediate i mm -hmm. said do a clearance and you're, you're successful with the clearance and then you're destined to do a remake in three six nine months time and the patient's happy with what they've got and maybe you copied their setup from their natural teeth when you did the immediate so then i will copy for aesthetic reasons, not for tolerance reasons, the upper. Lowers, I, I wouldn't copy unless you've got the history, as I said, of the elderly patient coming in with, with a history of successful dentures. So I'll, I'll copy uppers if I want the patient or the patient wants the same look again, because you can't really go wrong. You can't miss, you can't get the teeth in the wrong place. Yeah. So that's the, that's the two, two phases of copy. So I would do way more of the second because patients want to be, replicate what they've got with maybe some tweaks and mm -hmm. way less of the the first except is what we teach at bristol mm -hmm. and you know you know i'm conscious now that you know um there's a there's a lot of nhs dentists that follow me now and and they want to do prosthetics to their best but the limitations of the system so the limitations of the system means you, you've actually got to just you want predictable results um you don't want loads of reviews you don't want dissatisfaction so if you're copying what's good you know that's what you want to do so I think, you know, if, you, if you're an NHS dentist and the patient turns up with the right profile, copy dentures are the way to go. You can correct the vertical dimensions, but otherwise copy them. The other thing saves a visit, doesn't it? And every visit costs you money. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's private practice, private treatment, it costs the patient money. If it's NHS treatment, it's going to cost the dentist money. So you don't want to skip any stages. If you're doing copies, you know, you, you, you're saving yourself a visit and, you know, time's money. I don't know. I mean, I don't know anybody doing a visit in less than 20 minutes would be... Um, 
a bit fast, I think, wouldn't it? So if you're saving 20 minutes, that's a lot of money. Um, yeah. I'm guessing the lab fee's less. And, and to a point, I don't know whether people pour their own copies up. I'm sure you probably don't, but um, I do. And I get moaned at like mad in the practice because it stinks the practice out. Um, <laughs> I don't do it at home. I think I blow it. <laughs> so I try and do it end of the day. Um, but pouring your own is really easy and it's not clever. And I've got, I'll just show you a couple of pictures, but it, it's an easy thing to do. And again, you can save a visit. You can save a, a cost, a lab cost. Um, and there are occasions when somebody's come to you for copies Theoretically, you can do an appointment in the morning and you can do an appointment in the afternoon. If the patient went away for lunch, you could pull a copy up lunchtime in resin, mm -hmm. 20 minutes, trim it up, and you can do the second visit in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, there's, a, there's a lot to be said for it. I like it anyway, um, but it's a smelly process if you do it yourself. <laughs> I mean, some people think you need a pressure vessel to, to, to cure the resin. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't. So you don't need any tech. Oh, you, but if, if we did, you'd find some on eBay, wouldn't you? You've got a, you've always got a list, little, little oh, yeah. list of Everything's products. On eBay. <laughs> Everything's on eBay. One, one word of um, caution. If you're going to do a copy on a chrome palette, you have to thicken the chrome up. Otherwise, it's not going to pour. So if you've mm -hmm. got a chrome, mm -hmm. you're going to have to add some wax to the polished surface of the chrome, chrome palette before you do the putty. Otherwise, it'll end up wafer thin and it won't pour and it won't work. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll off you go. That's, so, good. That's, a good, uh, that's a good point. I think I think for mine, I don't know if you teach it differently at Bristol. I've just forgotten what we were taught. But my, my the main thing that we always had was there are three main things, and you want two of them to be decent. Otherwise, there's not much point. So that being either the teeth and the OBD, the polished surfaces or the fitting surfaces. If you're like if two of those are rubbish, then you may as well just yeah. sort of yeah. start start again. If you know the flanges and the teeth are fine, but the fits off great and you don't want to do reline because you don't want to risk it or whatever fine yeah. if the if it fits well and the flanges are good but the teeth are worn as you say then yeah exactly yeah. so think of it i'd like to think of it like that if too much of that is out of the way then just start again yeah. ready just start again start again yeah um and say so the crucial thing is it's the polished surface the polished surface is everything I and mean, effectively you know, i really don't think you need to do duplicate uppers but if you're going to do a duplicate lower and the patient wants a pair duplicate the both because the the clues will um position of the teeth, where the mm -hmm. teeth are set, upper and lower are going to be in the right position, so copy them both if you're going to do it in that respect. But mm -hmm. the lower is the one you're copying, and it's, it's the polished surface is, is, is gold. If you mess around with the polished surface on the lower that the patient's not got issues with, and I would always always say to students, that if, it, if the dentures look dreadful, and they look unstable, and they look unretentive, and the patient doesn't mention anything, and you just say in passing, how do you get on these dentures? Do they stay in okay? And they say, yeah. Do you find they're loose, they move around? They say, no. But to you, they look awful. That's fine. But that mm -hmm. does mean then you've effectively got a lower denture, at least in the patient's neutral zone, which is why what we're doing tonight makes sense, because I don't think you can separate the two. You've got, if you're talking copy dentures on lowers, mm -hmm. it's effectively copying the neutral zone on the lower. You can replace the fit surface so you get the fit's going to be better. You can replace the teeth, but all the polished surfaces are staying put. And if you mess around with those, I just think you're putting your head on the block. On the upper, fine, but do it on the lower. And well, you know, I think you've just lost the opportunity to do a copy and, and save yourself some grief. So, yeah, mm -hmm. go go with that. Polished well, surfaces go. Do you want to jump into your yeah yeah, into yeah okay, So uh, I've got to remember how to do this. So I've got to do that. Right, so now I've got to. I try this now. When I set my camera up, it lines up. So if I just set the camera up, now I go do it on this, and for some reason Instagram doesn't line up the same. So I set everything up in the right place now, and I'm moving it all back. Right now, to me, to me that looks central. Would you agree? That's fine. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this, this is this is gold. So this is the polished surfaces. I think I just went and nicked this from the lab at the hospital. I said, can somebody lend me a lower? I just need to do a. So th this is so this is classic though. I mean, what's good about this is we've got no sevens. But this is what you'd mm -hmm. be copying. So all the all the pink you can see is what we want to keep. Um, so buckle extend. Ex if it looks underextended and the patient's not moaning, don't mess around with it. Don't get clever. Don't be ambitious. There's no point. So again, this is the other thing. So it's the it's the lingual aspect and it's the buckle label aspect. Copy the lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, you, you're underextended here and here. And maybe it is, but you know, do you really want to chance it? Do you want to try mess around with it? I mean. I would have said no if the patient's happy with it. And if the patient said it's useless, it moves around, well, you shouldn't be doing it anyway. So, yeah, uh, don't worry. Uh, and then the view from the top, whatever you think, if these teeth are 
satisfactory from the patient's point of view and they don't say the denture's moving, they don't say they can't chew stuff, that's where they need to be for that patient. Mm -hmm. So that's where you put them. Um, of course, you've got to trust the lab to do this. Now, there, there's Bristol, we have, we have a problem with a the lab. They don't always do a proper copy. So I'm going to show you the way I do it. And we're trying to get the lab at Bristol to change. Mm -hmm. But funny enough, Bristol School's moving next summer. We're moving to a brand new building. Uh, okay. The and whole the whole dental school. The whole dental school. <coughs> um, yeah, so um, they've got a brand new. It's currently in that West building in the middle of Bristol. Oh, wow. So it's effectively a fairly new but modern building. So the light's good. Um, the flows are good. They're, they're, got the, they're spending 25 million refitting the building. With all COVID so, filters. Yeah, absolutely. But the downside <laughs> is that the lab aren't going with us, which is, mm. the, you know, everything with labs. You know, if, you, if you do prosthetics, you've got to be able to talk to your technician. And your technician's got to want to listen and do what you say. So, so I'm going to show you how I would do uh, a duplicate. So that, that's, that's the gold. You know, the pink is, is what you're replicating. Mm -hmm. um interesting you put you put that expensive really expensive um <laughs> the other day. Oh my god I, hope my principal's off. I, I think she's gone <laughs> <laughs> so she's not on I'm anymore it's fine uh, you can buy <laughs> lab putty which costs it's about a hundred pound a bucket but the bucket's massive mm -hmm. so buy yourself a big bag if you're going to do you know some of these just buy some but you can see what i've used here just to show you the props are you i oh, can't see this now can you see that yeah so I use a stock, a big solo tray to start with. Mm -hmm. So this is the biggest one, which is, oh God, I can't see what size it is now. It's covered with acrylic. The biggest solo tray. I have these paired up in my drawer. I'm not going to be using much nowadays. So if you're in NHS practice, biggest solo tray, dentate, and an edentulous upper to go with it. This makes your putty rigid. So there's no flex on this. If you do um these without the trays and you use an upper for a lower by the way so you can see that, that's a lower arch upper tray it just stops the thing flexing otherwise these things can, can spring so mm -hmm. when the lab put the elastic bands around it to pour it can actually flex and then you'll end up with a, an inaccurate replica so if you use cheap nasty stock trays because you use trays anyway take impressions ordinarily so it's no big deal i don't know what stock trays cost nowadays but that's what i would do so stick the putty wrap it around a tray so the first one you do shove it in the putty with a, with a big tray and then and don't forget to vaseline the surfaces if you don't vaseline these surfaces guys you've made a one-piece mold <laughs> you then gotta excavate the denture from the lump of a putty you've got bad news and never forget that's a lot of material don't be mean somebody's looking worried down there so you have to vaseline all the surfaces otherwise it'll all get stuck together um what's the advert the l'oreal advert because they're worth it that's why you yeah. spend the money it's a lot of material but the patient's worth it it's true isn't it <laughs> So there we go. Like There's that. the putty. There's the putty. Um, now, the first bit, you can make it easier for the technician. Uh, if you push the first one, I don't know if you can see here, don't push it right into the putty. I leave a, a periphery of a couple of millimeters all the way around. The reason for that is when you pour it, you'll end up with a flash line two or three millimeters away from the periphery. So there's no sharp edges. And critically on the lower, it means the lab won't accidentally trim off the periphery. Mm -hmm. So don't sink it right in to the, I don't know if you can see it on this one I've got here. God, this is, look at that, there we go. So can you see that? That's not pushed right into the putty. That makes a big difference because otherwise the flash line, the junction is right on the edge and it's easy for the lab to, I can get close up here, come on. It's easy for the lab to then chop off the peripheries you didn't want them to lose. So don't push it right into the putty. Um, and it just makes life easier. Boring stuff like that makes a difference. And if you're a busy practice, you can train your nurse to do this. And if you're not busy, you can train your nurse to do this and you can go and make a cup of tea or you can do it and she can make you a cup of tea. But it's a good way of doing it. It's a nice way of doing it. And if you want to practice, just get some old dentures. Ask your lab, they've got any cast offs. Uh, give one to your nurse and say, right, I've shown you what to do, have a bash. And just do that. Get some cheap lab putty and have a bash. Um, nurses don't mind doing it. Nurses quite often like doing different things. Because I'm a control freak, I wouldn't trust anybody to do this. So I'm just saying that. <laughs> I do it myself. Actually, Jess would do it and she could do it. She's, I think she said this year, she'll have been put, putting up with me for 10 years. So she came straight from school and she still puts up with me. So bless her. So there's the upper. Um, Hang on, Dentique is on. You've got to behave. Oh, is she? Oh. She just turned up. <laughs> God, behave. Yeah. 
Hi, <laughs> Dominica. Thanks for joining us. Right. Anyway, so that's, these aren't all the same cases, by the way. I was just trying to find images and chuck them all in. So if you think that doesn't look like the other one, it's not the other one. It doesn't matter. Again, and you can see here. So because I did, I, I didn't. You see, we've got this trough. Mm -hmm. And that trough should be reminiscent of impressions when the lab poured impressions. You keep the trough. This is gold. This is what keeps dentures in. And this is what replicates in duplicates. So don't mess with it. Um, I don't know why that's there. And this is so uh, when you've got it and you've Vaseline it, you've opened it up. And if you open these up, guys, so this is, if you open this up, it enters inside. Do not stand in the middle of the room and prize this out. Because if it pings out and bounces on the floor, you look a complete idiot uh, in public. So, and the other thing is on uppers, don't prize them out in the middle. You put a wax knife under the corner and just flick it out. Okay, so don't do it over the floor. If it bounces on the floor, it's going to break. You know it's going to break, and then it's not bad news. So, at least it breaks you after to... you've made the copy mold there. So, well, there is that, yeah. Um, so you can actually do the repair on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chess I wouldn't repair. have said that's going to really save the day, to be quite honest. <laughs> so, if you want to do this yourself, guys, so you cut some notches, scalpel, cut some notches, you pour the resin in one end, and the air gets pushed out the other end. And this stuff sets really quickly. The resin's cheap to buy, but it's, so it's pretty smelly. So elastic bands round it and you pour it in. Then this is, this stuff costs, I don't know, I, I bought some today, it was on offer. Um, it lasts for months, and, or years even, it lasts for years. So uh, all the companies do it. Um, the bigger the pot you buy it in, the cheaper it's gonna be. So that's what I use. And you mix it, you need about 15 ml of liquid if you wanna make your own. Add the powder, make it runny, tip it in, let it set. It's, it's easy. Um, and that's what you end up with. Uh, this is one we did recently, which actually went wrong. Goodness knows why. It's actually a duplicate that went wrong. And I'm not really going to talk about that because it upsets me too much. And I haven't, I haven't resolved it. <laughs> Still, after all these, after all these <laughs> I haven't days. Resolved it yet. I'm, fitting, uh, okay. I'm fitting the replacement tomorrow. So things go wrong, guys. Duplicates shouldn't. But into, if, I will talk about this case. Sure. So this case, this lovely lady came to me, wanted new dentures. The lower looked a bit low, so we mm. made duplicates. I thought this make, she wanted to look the same in the upper, replicate the diastomus, little wear facet here, replicate it. So I did all of this, but interestingly, I fitted them. It said, on the lower's rubbing, it's, it's causing pain. It's a duplicate, how can it? But you know, patients, she's okay. She wasn't making it up. And when you looked in the mouth, um, I sort of manipulate the mucosa. Normally, they, they, you've got attached, me, um, Mucosa on the alveolar ridge, everything moves on this lady. So it's almost like it's not attached. Mm. So the tiny change in fit surface, oh. tiny change caused some sort of friction. So what I did then is I, I duplicated it again and just didn't do an impression in the fit surface. And I'm fitting this tomorrow, but I'm still not convinced. She mm. apologizes every time she comes in. She's one of those people who feels bad about coming back. I feel bad that she's not happy. The upper's been fine ever since we did the upper's been fine. The retention's better, aesthetics are better, but the lower, and they've got to be worn in pairs, haven't they? So wish me luck tomorrow, people. Okay, so this is what the fits, this is the same case. That's what the fit surface looks like. As you can see she had a really narrow ridge. The ridge was good. Um, I thought I can't go wrong with this. How can you go wrong with a duplicate on this? But, and this is where the technicians will hate you if you don't do this, people. So when you get the replicas back or you've poured your own, this is effectively quite a snug fit on the ridge. I'm using my cursor. So this is going to be a really good fit on the ridge, which means unless it's a really sloppy fit and this wasn't, you've got very little room for impression material, mm -hmm. which means the impression's very thin. Now, people get taught this at undergraduate level and they probably forget and then it goes wrong. So if this is, if this is really thin, uh, the ridge is a bit fragile, You've got to do something with a big burr. And I think the next picture is a big burr. And you literally just hack this out. Can you see? That's the same case. So look mm -hmm. at this now. This is a massive trough. And this is, this is the one that went wrong. And I still got it wrong. So you create a huge trough. So there's no undercut. And you've got room to get loads of impression material around the ridge. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But obviously being think... careful to avoid the edges of the actual yeah so, know, so the periphery the periphery so this is gold but basically you just just hollow it out so a massive burn just chop it all out make a make loads of room so you've got loads of room for impression mm -hmm. 
Occasionally, people ask at this point, what impression tool do you use? What you don't use is alginate because it's too thin, it's too frail, and it won't work. So alginate's off the... And people ask me this. I had a guy from, I don't know, India or something the other week, said, we've only got alginate in the practice. I said, we can't do duplicates with alginate. This is not going to work. It's going to tear. It's going to dry out. So forget it. So you're going to have to use... I get away with zinc oxide on the lower. I would, ordinarily wouldn't recommend it on the upper. So you can use zinc oxide for the lower. You can use silicon for the lower, which a lot of people would do. And you can use polyether. Um, and I don't know if Nina's here tonight, but she was going to try some polyether. People don't seem to know you can get polyether in a Garant gun. So you can literally okay. just, you, you can squirt. It's the same as silicon, but it's, it's polyether. It's called Duo Soft. Um, and you just squirt this in the ridge like you did impression. But we'll come to that in a minute. So the big thing is hack out the undercuts. There's two golden rules with, with um, uh, duplicate dentures. One is remove all the undercuts from both the denture bases before you take the impressions. If you don't, the lab would probably like you take the impression off and snap the ridge off. Yeah. And then they try and glue it back together. And it's not their fault. And then it's like, and you might not notice they've glued it back together because they're quite skilled at that because they'll have broken models over the years, or they might even have duplicated it after. So you, you'll have no idea they've broken it. So for goodness sake, be nice to them. Get a big burr and hack it all out. Mm -hmm. um, if your technician's honest, they'll just say, you've messed up here, I can't do this. But most of them don't want to say to the dentist, your work's rubbish. So they just sort of, you know, try and make something of it for you. So take out the undercut and you can see there's this close up. That's the big burr. You need a big burr, okay? Um, just to make sure. So here we are. This is now, so this is the same case. She was overclosed. So what I do for overclosure is work out the three-way space, work out how much you want to prop the person open by, and work out which denture is wrong. Now, if the occlusal plane was right, and it was on this case, I'm not going to change the upper. So basically, we're going to jack the lower up. So but I, I use, I don't know what, you can, what else you can easily use to do this. You can probably use composite, but that's a bit of a faff. So I use a blob of green yeah. stick both sides mm -hmm. and get, get them to close at the height you want them at and just, just check it. So it's like a positive stop. <clears throat> so you're going to do, do the, the, the registration after you've worked out the vertical dimension. This is just to do the impression. So I said the two golden rules of um, duplicate dentures. One is take out the undercuts. The second one is make sure your impressions are done in occlusion. That's so important. If you don't do the impressions in occlusion, uh, there's a chance you're going to change the vertical dimension. And if it wasn't the intention to change the vertical dimension, you've propped them open because you've got too much impression material in there um you're not going to find that out until you get to fit potentially and then it's disastrous so impressions must be done in occlusion which is why you can't use zinc oxide for the upper because it's too viscous and it won't flow mm -hmm. i don't know if people use zinc oxide nowadays um i haven't I used this in uni i don't think if you're not because no. because you have to mix Silicon. it <laughs> it doesn't come Silicon. out of a gun does it um, it doesn't come out of a gun i like i like my holster uh we just had a yeah. question of, um <laughs> I should get one. That'd be quite good, actually. Um, do you have to do border moulding still? Is a question we've just had pop up. Yes, but you're border moulding with the impression material, not by adding green stick. Mm -hmm. um, so you always border mould. So when I, I so I'll and when you when you, I'll go back a stage. Once you've done these duplicates, once they're poured up in acrylic, it's in case the lab have left a sharp edge or is an air bubble or something. We've frozen. Are we back? We're back now. I think we're back. Yeah. So just make sure the patient's comfortable with both of them uh, and they should feel the same as their old dentures at this point. Just say they're going to feel a bit rough. They'll feel a bit sloppy because you've taken the fit surface out um, and make sure they can bite on them. Because if the impression is going to be done in occlusion, it's no good if it's painful. So they've got to be able to bite together. Um, I thought we did. But anyway, uh, I digress. So, uh, but we border molding crucial. You have to bore every single impression. You have to border mold. So you, you're treating this as a special tray. At the moment, we're not using it as an occlusal rim. You just do the impression. It's a special tray. So you put the tray in the mouth, right. the denture base in the mouth, seat it, and you're going to put. Can I do this? You're going to put a finger on each side on the. Oh, my fan's not big enough. Imagine that's that's one hand <laughs> finger because you need the other hand free. So you put one finger. Um, forefinger and middle finger on the uh five six region hold the denture down and you border mold with the other hand so you you this is so difficult to do you border mold and you border mold get the tongue out lick the top teeth and then bite together again then mm -hmm. open up again hold it down border mold so you go through the cycle of border molding including border mold and occlude otherwise there's a chance you're going to change the vertical dimension um at what point do you put the green stick on somebody's coming in late there you don't put green stick on <laughs> 
I think <laughs> they said about the, the, occlus the occlusal stops. I think they mean. Oh, the occlusal. I, I would I would do the green stick for the occlusal stops. Um, once I've tried both of these in, once I've worked out the height, because he should have worked the height you want to work at from the assessment stage. So I would do the stops. Doesn't you could do the occlusal stops afterwards? It doesn't really matter because you can you can take this out of the mouth. The joy is in oxide and silicon. I'm guessing you can take it out of the mouth and put it back in. So it doesn't matter. So I do the occlusal stops um, initially. And then the patient can bite them. Again, make sure that's even. If you're doing these stops, bear in mind this, this impression's in occlusion. That has got to be even left and right. So it's got to feel even to the patient. Um, border mold, border mold, tongue out. Keep going till it's set. Silicon's fine. Polyether's fine. Zinc oxide. But don't use zinc oxide on the upper because it's, it's too viscous and it'll thicken up the palate too far and the patient won't be able to close enough. I just don't think it flows far enough, even though I've got a photograph of me having done it. <laughs> Don't do, what I do. Don't do what I do, do what I say, okay? But it could have gone wrong. And if I showed it to a student, they'd say, oh, you told us not to, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, um, so border mold, and then, so in this case, this would have been two dentures. So do both the impressions, then record the registration afterwards. So, uh, and if you're worried that you've changed the vertical dimension, what you should do, I don't do it anymore, but you should, if you've not done this before, measure the vertical dimension before you do the impressions with a Willis gauge. Do one impression, measure it again. Second impression, measure it again. If the vertical dimensions are the same, you haven't changed anything. If it's changed a lot, with, with silicon, you can strip the impression out. With zinc oxide, it's a pain in the bottom because you, it takes forever to pick out zinc oxide. So uh, silicon's got, it, got its um, good side in that respect. But if you change the vertical dimension, don't think it'll be all right. It's not going to be all right. You're going to have to strip it out. But so if you're worried, measure the vertical dimension, take your impressions, measure it again. And then... You can do the, the occlusal stops with, the, with these um, green stickers I've done here, and then you just register it. Now, I've got this thing against Hydrobite, and I've worked out why it's so bloody awful. And what it is, is the world's using it incorrectly. I'm sure, Rupert, you're using it properly. But what people do, and I see this all day long in the hospital, and the, the lab just chuck the bites out because they're awful. Hydrobite and... Zermac, what, what's the, what's the, um, what the other one's called? Oclifast, yeah. Q-tard D. So what you're supposed to do is the patient's supposed to occlude like this and you're supposed to squirt it between the teeth. What you're not supposed to do is get the patient to open up and squirt it on top of the teeth, which is what people do, undergraduates do it. And I know talking to technicians, far too many people do that. As soon as you squirt it on the fit, on the occlusal surface, so let's just take this, take this lower out. Here's one I prepared earlier, which has now got stuck in the mould, and I haven't got a wax knife with me because I'm sat in my study. Go to the corner, enough, go to the corner. <laughs> <laughs> which... uh, get Smiler20 asking, medium body or light body? I would usually use, I do it in silicon, I'd usually use light body. Um, yep. Depends on the tissue, though. Like, if you've got um, quite sort of firm tissues, you could get away with some medium, but may as well just use light because it doesn't really matter. Yeah, the risk, the risk with anything other than light is a change in the vertical dimension. There's always yeah. the risk you're going to change the VD, OVD. So what was I saying now about this? Oh, yeah. So so if this is the lower and you get your, your uh, foot RD, whatever, let's get this in shot, and you squirt it on the teeth, by the time you get here to the centrals, before you get the, this is starting to set. And this is why technicians despise the material, not because it's rubbish, it's because it's used incorrectly. So if you're squirting on the occlusal surfaces, every chance, if you're quick, you might be fine. Undergraduates are too slow. They squirt it here, it's starting to set. So when they get to this side, this side's setting and it props the patient open and it springs. So you could do this a futile D just fine, but you've got to squirt it between the teeth while the patient's occluding. And they're supposed to push the tongue on the inside to actually make sure it's in the right uh, place and it doesn't flow too far lingually, palatally. But I would quite often just do this with wax. So soft wax, this is the occlusal stop. The patient can't overclose. Uh, there's no bounce to it. There's no flex. It's fine. So do both your impressions, then registration afterwards. Uh, and then it's easy after that. Are we any more? Um, do you full facial arches? What does that mean? So go light-bodied. Okay, I think we've covered everything so far, have we? Should we go to the next picture? Mm -hmm. So there we go, just to show how the... the I mean, this, this, this just works really well. There's no way the patient can bite through that. If you use anything other than something that's rock solid, there's a chance. So you could use um, composite, I guess, couldn't you? But expensive yeah. to use composite when you can use a blob of green stick. Uh, Expired composite. Yeah, exactly. Um, what did somebody say the other day? You can keep expired composite. 
Oh, CQC, the second in command of CQC, I know him, went for a barbecue. He said, you can have out-of-date materials in the practice, just stick them in a box with not for clinical use on it. Training uh, purposes. Uh, exactly. Or, or for stuff like, stuff like this. So, yeah. So, add it to denture, and then, then off you go. So, next picture. How are we doing for time? Oh, God. Unlimited. You've got four hours of time now, so uh, take I'm gonna, your time. Uh, <laughs> I'm walk, I want to walk Bowie before it gets dark. So, this, this is, oh, yeah. if you're interested, guys, this is polyether so this is hydrophilic so it just gives amazing impressions if you've got a gaggy patient quite often all the minor salivary glands here are just pumping out saliva it just seems to mess up the silicon with polyether it doesn't make much difference at all but i think you'll agree you get fantastic rolled borders with it i know this isn't a duplicate somebody's going to say it's not a duplicate it's got teeth on it i can't remember why i did this now but i don't know we did it um so uh maybe this is the beginning of you i don't know what i did but it's just to show you what polyether looks like uh it just makes nice nice impressions and the critical thing is so it's polyether to show you what it can do uh it sets in three minutes it doesn't taste as grim as it used to because it's got such bad press polyether you gotta use the right adhesive with it you can't just use um silicon adhesives one of the students did it the other week they used silicon adhesive for an alginate I think they pulled the tray out in the mouth, left the alginate in the mouth. So make sure you, <laughs> you use the right material. Um, it's, it's ridiculous. We got it's the same colour at Bristol. I think the same colour bottle. Uh, so that's, that's bad news. So the white Henry Shine bottle. Uh, quite possibly, yeah. So yeah. anyway, that's poly can give you nice impressions, nice roll borders. And look at that. That's just a, such a lot. Isn't that a lovely roll border, people? Look at this. Just so nice. Um, Polyether. So, and the critical thing is the roll border, uh, I can't emphasize, it's the roll border and the depth of the roll border that matters that keeps dentures in. So this is the same for duplicates or for conventional dentures. This bit here is critical. Is that in focus still? Can you see that all right? It's perfect, yeah. Yeah, that bit here, this is, this is gold. So the next slide will show you. So this is what I do. Now you can do this before you send it to the lab, if you like. Just get a Sharpie. Uh, you can draw you can use a biro on um polyether once you disinfect the impression just draw a line of where you want them to preserve the periphery otherwise mm. uh, you guys know the lab just hack all this off because they don't know and i didn't know when i was a technician and nobody taught me how valuable the outside of the rolled border is that's what seals that's what keeps the dentures in the cheek seals against the outside of the denture so you know, if you want lab to all this nice it, time border molding it you want them to use it Exactly. Otherwise, you know, people bought a mould. I don't know whether they realise the lab have then just shoved it down the plumbing. They put it on the model trimmer or they get a, uh, um, a standing knife and just chop it all off because it's difficult working. It's not easy actually producing a model with a trough and you have to get wax in it. But you've got to say this is what matters. Um, and I say I wasn't as a technician, I wasn't taught that. I didn't get it. And you think, oh, I'll just tackle this back. Nobody's going to mind. Of course, when a dentist gets it back, they don't know what's gone wrong. Mm. Um, yeah. So, and that's what your model looks like then. You can see that line is, is crystal clear. I wouldn't say the photograph's crystal clear. That's a pretty out of focus there. That's an old photograph. Again, this is pouring your own impressions. These moulds, they'll last you forever, 10 years. But, you know, you pour them yourself. But if you draw the line, technicians know what to do. They know what you want. If it comes back, hacked down, you're going to say, why did you do that? Well, take a photograph to prove it. Mm. Um, most technicians want to please you if they, if they know why you're doing it. So there you go. See, preserve that border. Gold dust. Um, now, when you've poured it up, some people. This is where Bristol. We've had differing views on what you do, and I don't know what I don't know what. What do you get back from your lab, Rupert? Out of interest. In, well, so, when you've done the impressions, doing, what do you get? Yeah. Acrylic based wax try. Acrylic base. So, how do they do yeah. that? So, no impression inside. A brand new acrylic base made on the on the cast. Yeah on the, the the new master cast yeah yeah so that that'll make that because that doesn't always happen so um and if again this is nhs if the nhs um it's going to cost you too much to get an acrylic base plate made i do this um for different reasons i put putty around the outside let's go back to what we we're talking about mm -hmm. so we've got putty around the outside so you've got to tell the lab this because you're not going to do this this is the lab's bit but this is how they can you know get it right for you uh, putty on the inside and then basically you've encased your duplicate in in putty now and then you pour it up in in um, wax so that's it assembled they just pour wax in there this is easy to do and it's cheaper than getting an acrylic base plate made i would imagine yeah so they've got an exact replica that way 
and they can put a wire strengthener in it but they're usually rigid enough the upper might flex a bit but the, the lower shouldn't and they can always drop wire strengtheners in these bases afterwards so you end up with a wax replica an exact replica and you can see this one here i don't know if you can see this this lingual is a bit weird looking now this was this is semi-neutral zone so you get these sort of weird and wacky shapes and sometimes it makes the, the denture much better for the patient so um we've come on to to duplicates um duplicates uh neutral zones in a minute yeah um, if you want to do question, it, saying, what are you what are you writing in lab instructions uh um, so what are your pour them up i just say pour them up i would say to the lab please pour it up in pour your impressions up um mount the cast and then pour it in wax and do a setup some labs and bristol were doing this they were doing the setup on the basis the lab got but they left impression inside it and it's such a mess so basically ask them to pour the whole thing in wax and then but if you want an acrylic base plate which is what you say you're getting rupert you can put an acrylic base plate down then put your templates back on then pour the wax in and then the wax is formed on top of the, the acrylic base plate. Mm -hmm. So the crucial thing is the, the, the wax is going to replicate the shape the denture was before, which is the thing you've got to save. Yeah, That's the crucial thing. And then there it is on the cast. So you can see where the teeth were. Uh, there's a little flash line you can see across the top here where the wax squeezed out. But basically everything else is where it was. Nothing else has changed. And then it's easy. The lab do this. And this is the critical thing. The lab take the teeth off and... They must use the same size teeth, especially posteriorly. You know, the width of these molars, if you make the molars wider, mm -hmm. you've encroached on the neutral zone. And if, you, if the patient said, oh, this doesn't feel quite right, are you hacking off the linger or are you hacking off the buckle? No, mm -hmm. you want the same size teeth. And the lab can do that. Um, and just if you're worried and somebody said, what do you tell the lab to do? Just say, put exactly the same size teeth in exactly the same place. And uh, if they deviate, it's not a duplicate anymore. And say the lower is the critical one. And as you're, you're moving outside the neutral zone, you're then potentially undoing all the good you might have done by trying to do duplicates. Um, and if that, so then you come back as a try in. And normally you try them in, and the patient says, Oh, it feels fine. It feels better than they used to, but everything feels right. Okay. Changing the vertical dimension is rarely an issue. If they present, I would say, if they present with a, um, a centimeter freeway space, don't give them three. If you go from, if you take seven millimetres off, off the uh, freeway space, they're potentially going to struggle. You know, the norm is two to three mil. If, if somebody presents with a centimetre or more, I, I don't I happily give them four or five millimetres of freeway space. If they're that overclosed, you're going to make a significant difference anyway. So, so yeah, don't go back to the textbook norm. Give them too much freeway space, but not as much as they had. Yeah. But conversely, don't give them what they had, because otherwise they're just next time they come and see you or the next person. There's another five years of denture attrition, another five years of algorithm absorption, and then up to 12 millimetres of freeway space. So you've got to <laughs> set the clock back a bit. Yeah. Of course, the saving grace is you can say to them, I'm going to change the height. It's going to feel different, but it's going to make you look younger. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to say no to that. So if they're going to look younger because you change the OVD, they're going to go with that. Um, and that's about, that's about it, I think. Is there anything? I don't think I've got any more pictures off. Oh, we've got one more picture. Oh, no, this is, this is, this is then neutral zone so i'll escape that so um yeah is that has that covered it i sort of no, raced it's through it. It. Beautifully. It has, it? beautifully have we, have, have we yeah. missed anything out no I don't, I don't think so at all i think um yeah you covered it nicely is there any any questions guys at that point just jump in if not we'll we'll plow on with neutral zone so, um so what impression do you use for load your uh so i use zinc oxide i use silicon low uh, light bodied or or polyether um yeah um are we done we're Should done we neutral, neutral zone away that took 45 minutes didn't it right here we go neutral zone people so neutral zone is basically the same thing in as much as you copy it you the polished surface is where the denture is gonna have to stay put if anybody saw that horrendous lower denture that i stuck on instagram was it last week the lower that just swims everywhere um <laughs> you've got to work out what's wrong because I don't do many neutral zones at all. Do you do many? I really don't. I, I don't see a massive need for neutral zone impressions. You, what you've got to do is differentiate between an unstable denture because the denture base is wrong as it goes, as opposed to an unstable denture because the teeth are in the wrong place and not in the neutral zone. I think half the time if the denture base is wrong, 
you know, there's, you don't need to do neutrals then, you need to get the denture base right. Um, if anyone's so not 100% with, uh, with what neutral zone is, head over to Abney's page, Dental Shot. She's done a really good animation uh, of lower neutral zone. Uh, I, don't know, I, I don't know if it's one of yours. Uh, have you been giving us some more projects to do? Uh, a couple, yeah. There's, there's, there's some stuff bubbling <laughs> under. We did, we did, I had one this week that came up. Uh, oh, about overloading. Uh, perforated trays we did with ones coming, which would be good. And I did another one. Abney will know. She's on it. Yeah, head, head, head over to Abney's because uh, she's got a really nice animation of the neutral zone and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, so um, neutral zone. So the bottom line is, I think they're difficult to do. And the classic mm. neutral zones, are, it's really faffy, isn't it? With the, I guess you were taught to say the wire loops. Were you taught the wire loops? It, it wasn't like neutral zone impressions weren't really covered that, that much at all, really. Yeah, yeah, it was more, it was more like I think the closest sort of thing we got to it was sort of you can send them away with a sort of, yeah, even like a viscogel kind of thing, like a conditioner yeah. and use that almost as a neutral zone impression over the course of a few, you know, hours or, yeah. or whatnot, you know, so that was as, about as close as we got really. So well, I, want to see what, I want to see what Bristol are teaching. Because classically, classically, people get taught the wire loops. Now I'm not showing that here because I just think it's a waste of time. I think it's too complicated. Where you actually make a, you take your primary impression, you take your secondary impression, you get a base plate made, and they put they put wire loops. So let, let's let's imagine this. Imagine this is a paste plate. So the teeth would be loops of wire, and the wire is then supposed to retain whatever material you want to use to record a neutral zone. And I, I think neutral zone is a bit of a misnomer. There's no zone in the mouth. I mean, some people call it. It's I heard the term once. It's it's a, a zone of minimum conflict. Basically, it's a balance point between the soft tissues, buccal, lingual, uh, labial. If you take mm. somebody's teeth out uh, and you look in the mouth, the tongue and the cheeks will touch each other. The tongue and the lip will touch each other. There's no, there's no gap. There's no space for a denture. And what mm. you're trying to do is get the denture in a point where there's a balance between the tissues, buccal, lingual, labial. And that's what it's all about which is what you'll have achieved if you've done a copy denture. If the patient turns up with a stable denture, their teeth mm -hmm. are in their neutral zone and don't mess with it. So if somebody turns up with a hideously unstable denture, you've got to work out, is it the denture base that's unstable or are the teeth in the wrong place? And my yeah. video, I think, if somebody wants to go back and look at that, if you know, I, I can't really play it on here, can I? How would I play the video on here? I don't think I can find it. Lower it's lip, right? There's this... Yeah, you put, I mean, go back and look, look at the video, guys. What, what they do, <coughs> excuse me, somebody said, I said, what's wrong with this denture? It's classic, we use this for a student teaching case. And this is the second one I've got exactly this. I did I tell you this story? This The, the lady I saw last week, um, I showed her a video of a patient I had three years ago with exactly the same scenario. So mm -hmm. I showed her what was wrong with her denture by showing her a video of this other guy. So if you, it's, it's usually the teeth are too far forward on the lower. And, and the reason, do you know what the reason for that is, Rupert? Do you know why the teeth are commonly too far forward on the lower? People love to put them over, over the front of the ridge and it's made it, oh, it's your seven millimetres again, probably, isn't it? No, no, it's not. It's, it, do you know what it is? <laughs> I'm convinced this is, and I'm sure I used to do this, and I've seen technicians do it in the last six months at Bristol. If you look at a big skeletal class two base on an articulator with no soft tissues in the way, Mm -hmm. So you've got, you've got no face around it. If you put a skeletal class two base on an articulator, look at it from the side, you get this massive space between the uppers and the lowers. It looks awful. It mm -hmm. just looks like you know, a cartoon image. So what the technicians do, and I'm convinced they do this, they'll slightly retrocline the uppers, reducing the lip support, and they'll procline the lowers to try and shrink that massive overjet. And all of a sudden, the teeth are outside the neutral zone on the lower. They're in conflict with it, and it goes wrong. So I think... A lot of the time, it's either that, and I said this the other night, either technician through um, best intentions have tried to shrink the overjet because it looks awful outside the mouth. In the mouth, it doesn't show most yeah. of the time. And if it does, that's what the patient was. Or the other thing is the dentist hasn't spent time making the lower rim stable. Mm -hmm. They just get the OVD, they get the patient into CR, and they just bite down. And they haven't trimmed the rim. If you don't make the rim stable in the mouth, it's going to go wrong. So that's what neutral zone is. You have to have a stable base to start with. If the base isn't stable, keep hacking bits off. Once the space is stable, you can then start doing a neutral zone with whatever system you like. 
So let's whiz through this. This is the same case, just to show you. It's, it's, the, it's the teeth in this case, I think, are too far forward. If you look at this from the top, it's the same case. They just look, to me, these look, I mean, the crest, middle of the ridge is here, and these teeth are just out here. Um, I don't know where this case came from. It's, not, it's nothing to do with me. Um, so this is the way you can do it. If you want to do it in a fairly easy way, and this is an experiment almost, so you're not going to commit yourself to clever dentistry. Again, if you want to do this on the health service and you think, oh, I'm going to have a, I think I know what's wrong with this, and you think the denture base is stable, and going back to, I've, I've sidetracked here, haven't I? To, to work out what's wrong um, with the lower, let's get the, let's, I'll stick with me. See the denture in the mouth, uh, if it moves, it's moving backwards and forwards, which they do. Quite often the lip will just shove the lower backwards. Just mm -hmm. pull the lip down and see if the denture stops moving. And invariably the denture will stop moving. So if it stopped moving, it's nothing to do with the denture base extension. Otherwise it would still move. Um, it's got to be the lips. If let the lip go. The lip springs back, denture springs back. Do it again. Pull the lip down. Denture's stable. That's all it is. So if you, if you find that out, and if it still moves... It's not the lip, it could be extension. So what you can do then is, you can put some light body silicon in, and this is all diagnostic before you do any dentistry, before you do any treatment on the patient, before you commit yourself to treating them, before you commit money and time from you, money from them is work out, is it gonna work? So if the denture still moves when you pull the lip out of the way, is it overextended somewhere? So then you can put light body silicon in the mouth, seat the denture, board the mold, get the patient to bite together, and then let it set, take it out. If the denture base is poking through in places, that signifies overextension. So okay. then you can say, right, we've got an overextended denture base. This all leads then to saying, well, just let's make a stable denture base and see if it works. I've done a neutral zone for ages now. I just spend more and more time getting the denture base stable and getting the rim stable. So let's go back. So, um, so what you can do is, if you want to do this, is, is do a, a duplicate of the present denture. If you think the denture base is okay, and it's the teeth in the wrong place, um, or if the denture base is overextended as well, do a duplicate. So just duplicate the whole thing, make the putty thing, and then get the base. This is my prop. So I don't know if you can see here what I've done is so I just hack off the sevens, mm -hmm. hack off all the anterior teeth. Always hack off the sevens. Hack off the sevens, unless you've got uh, natural teeth that might ever erupt. So just, yeah. just hourglass shape, all the lingual aspects, all the buckle aspects, hack okay. off all the anteriors. Um, and if that's stable in the mouth, if it's not, you then put some silicon inside it, put it in the mouth, take it out, check it, grind off the bits that are wrong. Then you can either visco gel it, and I've done that before mm -hmm. in the past, go visco gel the whole thing and send the patient away. The thing about this is because you've got you've got vertical stops now, and I think traditionally if you do the wire loops, you need the wrong vertical dimension. Mm -hmm. You've maintained mm -hmm. the vertical dimension with this, so this is still the same height it was. All you've done is hollow everything out. So the soft tissues can, can just force the impression material, whatever you choose to use, into the zone of minimal conflict. Um, and I just say to the patient, can you just wear this for 24 hours? If the patient wants, to, wants an improvement, then most of them will say yes. So I said, just go away where, I used to use ViscoGel. If you use ViscoGel routine is still Rupert, or have you stopped, gone off it? I use it for just like my sort of like immediate relines at two, three months before. But not, but not neutral zone or functional impressions anymore. I think they've changed the formulation. I don't think it's as good as it used to be. It mm. used to be quite good for, for neutral zones, send a patient away for 24 hours. I don't trust it anymore. Um, so basically, so hourglass the whole thing, underextend it all um, slightly, and just check it. If it's okay in the mouth, you can then, you can do this chair side with, with light body silicon, or you can try visco gel. Um, sorry, medium body silicon, and just have a go, see, see what you end up with. Um, so that's what it looks like close up. So I've just hacked everything. The peripheries I've left alone in this case because I'm assuming it's okay. If it was wrong, you'd chop them back. Um, if it's underextended, you can do the experiment because we're not, this isn't a duplicate. You could then say, right, I'm going to put some green stick down here and see if it, see if it stabilizes it or destabilizes. If it destabilizes it, you've done too much. If it adds stability or it doesn't produce instability, you know, you're doing the right thing. Because all this is is a glorified special train now um, yeah. that's, that's also going to function as an occlusal rim. Because you're going to take an impression in the fit surface as well, so it doesn't matter. Um, so add some green stick, see what happens. If you're adding green stick and you're changing the lingual contour down here, I always get a cup of water for the patient to swallow. I want them to, to actually swallow. I don't just board a mold. The tongue will come up within reason and normal movements. 
the high it's going to the highest point you'll ever get to is when they're swallowing. So I get patients mm -hmm. to swallow with a light body silicon and see what happens, see if it displaces it, okay? And see what you get. Um, so you can see this is just hacked. This is cheap. You know, you could do the duplicate yourself, send it off, get the lab to board this up. You haven't committed to treatment, which might not work. And sometimes you don't want to take the punt and hope it works, do you? Because yeah. it might not. Uh, or you can do it like this. So this is, I did this for somebody when I was pulling my hair out. Shouldn't have done that. It's too late now. Um, I just did, this didn't, I think this failed. She just couldn't wear anything. Um, but you can do it like this and then you can cover this with silicon. Uh, this is the last one I did. This is a few years old now. Um, the fit surface, this is, this isn't zinc, this isn't viscogel. It's something that Ivoclar bought out, which worked quite well. You can put this in hot water, put it in the mouth, it molds. This, this, that's quite nice. That worked reasonably well. But you can see we've got show through here. You can see this is poking through. So this is overextension. So I'd have, I'd have chopped that back. Um, mm. And we've got a bit of overextension here as well. If it doesn't form, the border's not formed by the impression material, it's overextended. Um, and just chop it back. So um, you can see that that was quite successful. But then I think this is just this is just messy and imprecise. And there's nothing to give the vertical. This is classic what people do, but I think there's no vertical dimension here. So the patient overclosed, does it change the neutral zone? I think you want to record a neutral zone, a dimension, the vertical dimension the patient's going to live with, which is why I prefer doing it with something like the block. Um, but say, so, I, nowadays I make so much fuss of getting, getting the basis stable and then the rim stable. I don't know when the last do the neutral zone. Maybe it'll happen, but you guys will hear about it if I do. Um, so just build up <laughs> silicon, stick, silicon sticks to silicon, so you can build the layers up and you can see what's going on here. But this, you could have done this with an inclusal rim. You just chop the rim back. Mm -hmm. The other thing with the clues or rims, I'm going to do a post on this, is don't start with massive rims. The lab give you value for money with wax, and the wax rims are so thick. Just talk to your technician and say, look, can you make me some skinny rims? The lower, you only need three or four millimetres, five millimetres width to the rim if they built it up over the middle of the ridge. Because you can get, I don't know if you know, Rupert, but rims are ready. You can buy ready-made rims. The labs mm -hmm. buy boxes of ready-made but they're massive. They're just, just too much wax. So I just roll up, you know, half a sheet of wax, three quarters of a sheet of wax and just make, make my own rims, as you know. Roll your own. Um, I don't smoke, but rolling your own rims is a nice way of doing it. <laughs> it works. But otherwise, you spend up hacking away wax and think, you know, if time's of the essence, if you're in NHS practice, you don't want to be chopping your rims down. Yeah. Start off yeah. skinny. You can, add, you can add wax. You won't need to add wax. Get skinny rims, guys. Skinny rims. So this is, I think this must be last, this is an accidental neutral zone. You might have seen this before. As you guys know, I always green stick lingle on the lower. The tray should fit. Dominique made this. It fits beautifully. I just always check this because this is the bit I can't be sure that's right. So I'll green stick lingually both sides and then I'll do one side at a time. Then I do a light bodied wash on the fit surface to check the extension of my special tray. I'm doing one of these tomorrow. Mm -hmm. so i did a light body washing this and i just turned it over and thought oh my god there's a neutral zone impression there isn't there i mean how nice is this neutral zone neutral zone and you know if, if your neutral zones if your tray is too big you can see where it should be can't you can it, so this is this is basically this is that isn't it mm -hmm. the finger rests are basically the vertical stops i've kept so this is a neutral zone and you can see the handle's too far but you can extrapolate that so this is a neutral zone. And this is how skinny it is. This shows you why you shouldn't have sevens, doesn't it? You see the cheeks here, and that's the tongue. Just don't put a seven there. And then the soft tissues just come over the top and it holds the denture down, and it's just lovely. So leave your sevens off if you can, guys. Um, it won't save you Absolutely. any money. The labs will just end up, the labs will end up with boxes and boxes of second molars, <laughs> which are useless. You can't do anything with them. But hey, you pay for a set. You know, you don't, don't use every tooth you were given, leave them off. I did have a patient once complain, I've got less teeth on my old denture, more teeth on my old than my new, and they made me put them back on, but yeah, yeah. Oh, just a cantankerous old guy. But um, <laughs> So that's an accidental neutral zone to show you. But So you could have done that. So imagine that's the pink denture. You just put some silicon on there, and you don't need that full. All you need to know is where it's going to be. So that's enough of a neutral zone. If this is the right height, the lab know where to put the teeth, don't they? Mm -hmm. That middle line is where the middle of the tooth goes. So you just stick the teeth either side. And if you're doing a neutral zone, use small teeth. Just narrow teeth, the smallest mold you can get. That's all they need. If you want a stable denture, do it. Has anybody ever complained of the molars being too narrow on a denture? Ever? <laughs> I've never thought of that until now. I don't think anybody's ever said, oh, these molars aren't big enough at the back. 
Have you ever heard that? Maybe you'll, maybe you'll go to this count in his sevens. I reckon he uh, would. Oh, he might have done, yeah. He might have done. <laughs> he was okay. Just like, the ones where, they me- where they're measuring them side by side. Yeah, yeah. they got some calipers out. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, that's neutral zone. So, basically, you spend the time getting the denture base stable, then make a rim on it. So, if your tray is stable, your impression is stable, you don't need a neutral zone. You just need to make sure your rim is trimmed properly and just ask the lab to follow the contour. Mm-hmm. Easy. Look at it's that. It's sort of similar to what we're saying is the, I know normally would be like panicky and getting it finished. Uh, it's the same sort of with the, what we're saying about the copy as well. You know, it's like, if you're doing it this way, is it that necessary? It might be useful yeah. in the odd yeah. situation. Yeah. But so you accidentally do it sometimes with, with your impression anyway. Yeah, I think you do. So I think it, they're almost, they're almost complementary subjects, aren't they? I think if you, if you're doing a duplicate denture, it's because you want to copy the neutral zone. And if you haven't got a neutral zone to copy, you need to talk about it. So this is what we've done tonight, isn't it? So um, Perfect. hopefully it's worked and it's still a bit of daylight. So have we got any questions? Somebody like a Sharpie quick, story, didn't they? Quick question <laughs> so uh, we can get out with the dog. Yeah. Um, and you can have your, your burnt curry. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it is. It's, it's, it's not bubbling so away, too burnt, it? yeah. It's bubbling away. Yeah. It's bubbling away. So <laughs> if anybody's on tonight and wanted to know where my videos were, I was going to do, I'll be doing them in the morning before I go to work of the special trays I've, I put two trays up did you see the trays I put up last night look at the fit surface people if it doesn't look like a denture it's too big I like it's it the, big. it's the blue isn't it I like it in the blue base you stunned everyone into silence by the look of it so they've all uh, gone they've I'll let you gone. get off all... oh, Alan's back on great chat guys cheers Alan uh, we're going to repeat it on Thursday just for you uh, I know you like to do your lives twice uh, <laughs> hopefully we haven't had any connection issues again that was a bit of a bit of a shock um second one was fine good. second one was yeah good. alan had to track down the the good wi-fi the good cornish wi-fi oh, right. um perfect well cheers for coming back on for your third third time mike we'll get no you problems. on you Pleasure. Get, get, gate crush someone else's again um yeah. we go. good to be good to be back chatting dentures again it's a bit of a change so we're gonna after that we're gonna go off track again we're gonna talk digital with simon chard next week so that's gonna be really good and then a bit of perio to end the month so that's uh oh, god we're covering all the bases now and then your mate Finley's coming on uh, in October. So that's going to be good. Look forward to it. I'll sign in for that. Right. Yeah, talk to you in the awesome. week. Okay. Have a good Cheers evening. Man. Enjoy your dinner. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, guys. Bye. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. Bye.